Starting on Wednesday on BBC One, The Day of the Triffids, a chilling serial based on John Wyndham's classic story. A global catastrophe threatens humanity with a deadly form of plant life. If it were a choice of survival between a blind man and a triffid, I know which I'd put my money on. But you're assuming equal intelligence. No, no, I'm not. They don't need their intelligence to equal ours. Triffid sting, will they? Yes, that's right. I, I work on a Triffid farm. Thought they all had their stings docked these days. Uh, not the ones we tapped for oil. This one gave me a vicious swipe on the side of the mask and some of the poison got inside. You're rather lucky to be alive, aren't you? I, uh, take it you didn't see that comet stuff last night? No. Why? Well, uh, that seems to be the main cause of it. This comet was so bright it burned out something in the eye. John Dutton stars in The Day of the Triffids on Wednesday at 7.40 on BBC One. And welcome to From the Archive, a British television vlog. My name is Greg Bakken, and I always love to be able to talk about DVD and Blu-ray releases, especially about series that are, you know, they're kind of legendary. They're, they're series that really evoked emotion to people when they originally saw them. Series that uh, are fondly remembered are ones that, for me, for example had heard about for years and years and years, and maybe I never got a chance to see them. For example, like Quatermass in the Pit was one in the 1990s. I read about, sounded amazing, but I never actually had seen it until like the uh, mid 1990s. Uh, you know, but its reputation preceded itself. And I feel like uh, The Day of the Triffids is another one of them. And The Day of the Triffids for me is one of those great uh, BBC series that I, I really have time for. And the reason why I do is because I love pretty much much of the BBC output that was uh, studio stuff recorded on videotape, location stuff recorded on 16 millimeter film. All this stuff was uh, really exciting to me. I just love that look and I loved how the stuff was made. And, uh, you know, it's one of those series that I remember seeing advertised on PBS. I didn't see it in the 80s myself. But it's still one that years later I heard about and, and really wanted to check out. And it was actually not easy for me to find these, to find this at all. You know, it wasn't until later when the BBC re released the official DVD it was the first time I've ever seen these. Um, now, it seems like that the BBC are taking series and releasing a couple of them every year on Blu-ray. And I don't mean the stuff like just straight up Upreses such as Faulty Towers or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or even Red Dwarf. And I'm not counting Doctor Who because it's going to be in its own table, you know, of stuff. It's not part of this. I always, I always keep Doctor Who separate, to be very honest. Uh, but I'm talking about stuff like last year. We had Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy released on Blu-ray. We had uh, Edge of Darkness released on Blu-ray. You know, the ones that had a significant amount of work put to them. And that they seem to be uh, making, you know, kind of the same sort of kind of feel for all these. And I think that this is one of them right here, Day of the Triffids. As well as, you know, maybe there's something else coming that the BBC is working on. I don't know. Not that I would know anything more than anyone else but you know it just kind of seems like there's a there's a possibility for it so i myself am not going to go into a long history about the background of the day of the triffids i think uh, if you're interested enough in it you you do it yourself you know you either you know how to look it up or you know it already and you'd know it far better than i would um but it was a novel that was published by john windham in 1951 okay um there has been film versions of this but 
for any sort of comparison I'm doing, I'm really looking at anything that the BBC has done uh, prior and up to the release of the 1981 uh, TV series. Anything beyond that or any of the film versions, I'm not really going to talk about because those are very different sort of things. I'm just, for me, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, historically an archive kind of person. So, uh, you know, this is right in, this right up the alley. And there's some other things that are right there too. So I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily focusing on uh, anything beyond this uh, production right here. Uh, it had, the BBC had done two radio productions of the Day of the Triffids. The first one was in 1957, and uh, it was with Patrick Barr, and Doctor Who fans are going to remember him as Hobson in the Doctor Who story, The Moon Base, which is really interesting because it was about, nearly about uh, 10 years before he made that appearance. Obviously, he did a lot of other things in Doctor Who, but it's just easier sometimes, since I know my audience, to point out the Doctor Who reference than almost anything else. Um, and Monica Gray played, uh, was also in this, and she played uh, Paula, Quatermass's daughter in Quatermass 2, which is another really interesting thing, and that would have been, uh, what, about uh, a couple years after the Quatermass 2 live broadcasts. So I just want to do just a quick extract from that, because it's actually not, to my knowledge, it's not available anywhere. So here's just a quick uh, extract from that radio production from 1957. Perhaps she's right. Perhaps that's all the education she needs. What are you writing so busily, darling? My journal. <laughs> are you going to be the Anglo-Saxon chronicler of our age? <laughs> no, but we've got to keep a record of what we did and how we did it, you know, when we sowed and what we reaped. Otherwise, we won't even be able to learn from our mistakes. And, oh, my goodness, we're going to make some. Pressed. Not really. But I've been trying to read up a bit about farming and animal management... The trouble is that none of the writers seem to think that anyone can be as ignorant as I am. They all start halfway through. I know. It's the same with cooking and gardening. Well, I suppose we'll learn. How much ground are you going to fence off? About a hundred acres, with an inner fence to keep us out of stinging rain. That's going to take you a bit of time. Time, darling, is what we have a great deal of. All the time in the world. And now the second radio production was in 1968. And it was uh, written by the same screenwriter. And uh, this production had uh, Gary Watson in it. And it also had one of my favorite actors in it, Barbara Shelley, who, you know, we were talking about the film version of Quatermass in the Pit, uh, amongst many, many other things. And uh, this, is, uh, this one is available on CD, but here's just a quick extract of it also. Well, it's our home, too. Mm, I know. Well, perhaps we could stay here a year or two longer. What do you think? No, no. No point. And think of the children. Mm, that's what made the others decide to leave. You know, all the time I've been haunted by something Coco said years ago. Hmm? The first generation peasants. The next savages. That's what'll happen unless we admit defeat and go. Well, not defeat, exactly. Well, all right, all right. Strategic withdrawal. Mm, yes. How soon... Well, let's see the summer out. Hmm? We can live off stores and have have a sort of holiday. <laughs> right. <laughs> then in September we'll we'll pack up. We'll drive down to Portsmouth. We'll flash a signal to the island, and wait for a boat to pick us up. Mm. You know, the last few years haven't been very easy. <laughs> but I know I shall cry when we have to leave here. <laughs> Darn. Now, for the 1981 production, the Radio Times did a very decent-sized feature on uh, the Day of the Triffids. It, it, had, it was multiple pages, and it went into some depth about it, which was really quite nice. Uh, the actual series ran from the 10th of September to the 15th of October in 1981. And, you know, watching it again, I remember watching it at the time, too, is that, you know, the funny thing is, is that the Triffids aren't the scary part of... Uh, the story. They're scary enough. You know, they show up out of nowhere. Their design uh, for the BBC series is superb. Uh, but what's scary is the idea of not only waking up blind, which happens in this, but everybody is blind. 
you woke you wake up blind and if say that you're mad to turn on a radio or turn on a TV there's no one broadcasting because most everyone is blind and you start to realize that it happened from meteor shower the night before and in in the story it never answers uh, that who who created that meteor shower is that a natural phenomenon is it a government agent is it another i mean there's a lot of things at play with both the triffids themselves as well as this meteor shower that never get answered in this and it it's really frightening you know all the that uh post apocalyptic stuff is a very frightening scenario and especially as we live in 2020 you know some of that stuff feels just a little bit more real doesn't it when you watch it and it's stuff like this even more so our <laughs> survivors is a, another series that really drives home what happens here you know what what's going on these are scary themes and i know that this is stuff that scared people in 1981 also so you know it's it's a real powerful piece and it goes beyond the triffids and the triffids themselves are are frightening and they're creepy and the way that they're they're uh uh what is it it's not even legs but they're they're little things that like knock on its own self as communication to other triffids is really chilling and it's it's well watching it again i i couldn't believe how amazing this looked you know in terms of the story and how well it held up it's it's such a it's such a uh, frightening piece, and sometimes the Triffids get sidelined throughout the whole thing. Uh, which the, all of a sudden, when you think that you forget about them, there is one out of nowhere. Even though they're easy to kill, their sheer numbers are 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 you know they're 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 growing like weeds, I guess you could say. And the fact that uh, uh, you know that they have this stinger that propels itself onto people and it blinds them, and and it's it's kills them and it's it's such an inventive inventive story you know and and it, it brings up the whole idea about how you can survive on your own and I, I just don't think I could I'm, I'm I'm pretty much a marshmallow and uh, uh, for those of you who can good for you for myself you know as you can see I'm surrounded by blu-rays and DVDs I know nothing about self-survival so when you watch this stuff it's really good drama good television but it's also frightening and it's very introspective in the sense it's like I don't know how to do any of this stuff so we got we got that out of the way um, Going looking at past versions of this release of the Day of the Triffids, I was really surprised that there was never, and someone pointed out if I'm wrong, that there was never a VHS release of this uh, in the UK, especially in the 1990s when they were releasing a lot of these sci-fi series. Uh, you know, obviously we got Blake 7, once again, Doctor Who, but you started to get releases of Survivors. You started to get releases of, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You got some Doom Watch. You got Quatermass in the Pit. You know, something like Day of the Triffids is an extremely uh, viable option and I had not seen a release for it anywhere and quite honestly if I would have seen a release for this in uh, in on VHS in the 1990s I would have picked it up and that's why I really don't think that there was one right because I mean I can't believe I I can't find it now and I can't believe that I would have let it go I just I, I was really surprised by that that seemed to be the perfect length and the perfect series to be released onto VHS. You know, it'd be one of those things that I would have expected to be released as a movie version first and then maybe followed up episodically unless it was a DVD that came out. Speaking of which, in 2005, a DVD did come out. And it was the first DVD release, uh, and really the only one, I guess, uh, of the Day of the Triffids. And is episodic and if you if you look at the cover it looks like someone threw up on it and created a cover from that you know there's so many elements to it and I hold uh, many of the uh, original pictures to this and they're all just it's just a montage of, of them all thrown together and that's not unusual but they make no sense and you know we've all seen what a triffid looks like and and it's like it looks like this is a clam up here you know i don't understand it and it's spewing something which it never did in the show you know and and it's unfortunate 
that releases Git covers like this. And if you created this cover and you're watching this, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself, quite honestly. Um, the, the problem with this is that you, you want to get people who have not seen it interested in watching these programs. And unless, you know, this is a genre I'm interested in, so it didn't really matter what the cover looked like. But, you know, you think about the average person and you hope that this is something that, you know, could get them interested. And it's this is this is just such a, a barf fest. It's not even funny. Another one that's really disappointing is the Quatermass Trilogy cover because it could look so cool. And it's just another sort of probably the same people, quite honestly, right? It just looks like it's just trying to fit too much in there. And, you know... When it comes to cover design, I really feel like less is more in these situations. The quality of this was, I would just assume no work was done on this. It was just that the masters were taken and uh, authored for DVD release, which quite frankly, I'm fine with. You know, I know everyone wants to see stuff remastered and we're gonna explain, we're gonna find out why maybe that's not a great idea always. Uh, but the thing about it is sometimes, as long as it's not you know, sourced from VHS or something. I just want it. I just want it. I just want it in my collection. I don't necessarily need it to be remastered, though it's nice. I just want to be able to have it for myself and watch. And that's where this fit in perfectly. Uh, there are no uh, extras to this apart from a viewing notebook that Andrew Pixley put together. And that was really nice. And it's a really nice book. We'll talk about that in a second also. Uh, but this is, um, and that alone, you know, I, once again, if you give me a book, you give me a, a DVD of uncut episodes, I'm as happy as a clam. So, you know, I, it's, it's not a big deal at all. Um, moving on to this release, right? Uh, this is this was just released. Uh, this is September right now, so it was it was released just a few weeks ago, uh, just in time for its it, what it would be then the uh, is it the 39th anniversary of of this story. Now this has divided fans of the series. This release right here. Um, one of the things that's a selling point of this is that uh, there's a lot of film to this production. A lot of location work done to it, a lot of film shot. Most of this story is on film. And surprisingly, which I didn't know, and this is good, is that the film exists. So uh, what the BBC decided to do is take the film, tra retransfer it. Uh, a place called The Ark did the restoration of it, and they created this beautiful film uh, for it. There's absolutely wonderful film uh, restoration for the Day of the Triffids. Now, as you know, uh, that as I alluded to at the beginning, most of the stuff output by the BBC in the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, more so, not, not as much in the 90s, was interior studio stuff was shot on videotape location stuff shot on film. So this being a typical uh, BBC production that uh, David Maloney uh, produced, this was, you know, has some studio shots in it. What is a problem is that the studio shots for this was filmized for this release. So it doesn't have the look of video, it has the look of film. The problem with that though, is when you shoot something on video, you light it and you shoot it completely different than how you would shoot um, how you'd shoot something on film. It's very noticeable. And it's also not the way that it was originally broadcast, which, you know, that's a whole other debate right there. Um, now at first, I thought that this was just and I dare say it like this, but I thought it was another BBC cock-up. And you say, well, are you being harsh on the BBC? Not really. Here's the thing. Okay, so Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. You remember that video I did last year? Well, you know, I guess I didn't know the story, the series as well as I thought I did. And one of the things that was missing from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy on that 40th anniversary Blu-ray release was the, uh, some of the with some of the translations on the bottom of the screen that uh, was in English because they were speaking another language. 
and uh, that was missing from the uh, Blu-ray. I had no idea. I totally missed that, but uh, I did end up getting a replacement disc because the BBC offered a replacement disc. Red Dwarf. There were problems with that one. I alluded that to my to that a little bit in my uh, the Promised Land review that I did, and there were replacement discs that were offered for that. Uh, a number of the Doctor Who releases on Blu-ray, a couple. Let's let's be realistic. I don't want to blow it out of proportion needed some replacement discs offered, especially for season 12. You know, you get to the point that it's like, okay, well, mistakes happen, but unfortunately when we go into these things, buying these things, assuming that there's going to be a mistake, that's that's not right, and that's a problem. And so that's why I'm like, well, at first I thought that this was a BBC cock-up. I am not 100% sure. So as you may or may not know that they, um, the BBC offers a, an email, a DVD support email. So if you have problems, you can email them. And a number of people have emailed uh, BBC DVD support and brought up the fact, hey, this stuff is filmized. The video is filmized. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to offer a replacement? And this is uh, their response that uh, they've been sending out to people. For the HD restoration of the Day of the Triffids, we access the original 24 frames per second film elements. 24 frames per second, that's not right. And where these were unavailable, the Digibeta 50i Masters. That's not right either. Uh, as we worked on the 50i material, it came to light that there were multiple dropouts in the assets we had, as well as a large amount of digital video noise reduction present. These artifacts required removal in order to improve the presentation of the material. With all this in mind, we weighed up the options available to us with mixed source materials where the majority were 24 frames per second film. It's not 24 frames per second. Whilst we always strive to keep the original appearance of archival footage, sometimes it's not possible. However, given the constraints described above, we feel we've offered the best results feasible on this occasion. The feature it included on the Blu-ray disc delves into more detail on these process should you be interested. Taking the above into account, I can confirm we do not have any plans to issue replacement discs on this occasion. So what they're saying is that uh, to put it on the Blu-ray, you, you need to do this to the video. This is how it works. Obviously, we all know that is 155 million percent wrong. Yes, that is a percentage. And, you know, what, what do we have that we can, we can show just from the BBC uh, output themselves? I just look at my shelves over here. I see The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I see Faulty Towers. Right behind me, there is Red Dwarf. All of these were shot on video, and they were released looking like video. Over to my uh, left here, which you do not see, is a massive shelf that is full of Doctor Who. There has now been seven Blu-ray sets of classic series Doctor Who released that have video component to it, and they've all been released correctly. So this is bull, what they're telling us. You know, that is not correct. What I feel like is happening, and I could be wrong here, but I feel like that it was a decision to filmize everything because that is you know to make it because there's much less video than film it makes it less jarring so they think uh i disagree with it they haven't said this this is not something that they have said that they have done this is just a theory i have on it but i also base this on a little bit of fact over here in the u.s uh bbc worldwide had released a set of keeping up appearances. Okay, it's like, what does keeping up appearances have to do with the Day of the Triffids? You'd be surprised. Keeping up appearances had this really nice set that was released in, uh, well, shoot, it was, uh, I think, 2012 or something like that. And so, uh, I was really excited. I am actually a fan of keeping up appearances. I'm not going to lie. And here's here's the release right here. This was really cool. And it even comes in its own little fun uh, little pouch. It was meant to be like a little thing. And it's, you know, it's nice to have something that they say is remastered. Every episode on here is filmized. And that is what they look at as being 
uh, remastered is that they didn't do anything to the picture per se, otherwise filmizing it, which is unfortunate. Uh, Fabulous Films had released a, uh, a release of Mr. Bean, and they had it, it as like a 20, uh, 25th anniversary set or something of Mr. Bean. That is also every episode is filmized and uh, that is you know that's questionable if that was done on purpose or not but based on this I feel like that it is uh, very possible that it was done purposely because I think I think that these studios feel like that it makes um, it makes these more accessible if they don't look like video Another example is Acorn's release of North and South, starring Patrick Stewart, that came out in in uh, and DVD in the U.S. a long time ago, and that is filmized also. And I reached out to them about it, and they say that's how they got the masters. So, I'm afraid that, and there's once again, there is nothing that is officially said that this is the case. But I do worry that this is a situation where they thought, hey, you know, let's just filmize it. Let's just uh, do that. And if that's the case, that's really unfortunate because that is not how these things were originally broadcast. And it doesn't look right, okay? Another thing I've seen online people talk about uh, and, and have a complaint about is for the opening credits for the Day of the Triffids, the the title the day of the triffids on the opening credit was superimposed over the original film elements and so they have the original clean film to the day of the triffids without the titles so the arc put them back in and the the titles for the day of the triffids are smaller like the title that says the day of the triffid is smaller than the original broadcast version now, I'm not up in arms about that. Someone pointed it out. They were upset about it. Um, you know, if no one would have pointed it out to me, I don't know if I would have ever noticed, to be honest. And I really try not to be one of those people who aren't, is enjoying something, and when someone points it out, then get up in arms uh, with it, unless I, it really bothers me. Now, if we talk about extras for this thing, what you get here, I'm going to take this out here. You get uh six episodes of the day of the triffids as we know you also get this um this book of viewing notes written by andrew pixley now you might have remembered that i said that the dvd has uh viewing notes written by andrew pixley so i wanted to see if they were uh the same notes and I open it up and my notes are gone. Where are my notes? You know, and, and this is something that, you know, the the OCD person in me just has driven crazy because where did I put these notes? Um, not the end of the world. I mean, it's, I, I, I think I did a blog posting about the this uh, years ago and I think I read the book then. And I think wherever I read it, it's probably still there. Um, because I wanted to know if if it's the same as what's on here. So luckily, I have this preserved as uh, scans, as a digital format of the book, as I do with almost all my books that I have with my DVDs, except the ones that network do, because I'm not scanning 600 pages for viewing notes. Um, and I looked, and there are the, they are the same viewing notes. There's There might be some minor differences throughout it. I know that... Uh, uh, the last paragraph has been updated, uh, but overall it's the same, and they're good viewing notes. It's a very, very comprehensive uh, list of stuff uh, that you know only Andrew can really. I mean, he he has he has a gift for making concise and very exciting information. So yes, uh, you know, so it's okay that I lost this because I, I have this now, so that works really well. And then, of course, uh, as I alluded to with the response from uh, uh, DVD support, is that there is a restoration feature in it. And it's actually a sizable restoration feature at, in it. You know, it has a lot of before and after about removing scratches from uh, film and, and grading and all this stuff. But, you know, oddly enough, it also includes restoration of basically turning the video sequences into film sequences. It's like, 
okay, <laughs> you know, and this is the stuff we don't want to see. We don't want to know that. We want it the same way. What is really interesting, though, and I don't know if any of you have noticed who has this, when they're showing the color grading, they're actually using some of the video sequences. And once they regraded that, the color is extremely different between between uh, that. And it's it's something that uh, I find very interesting the how how what they chose for coloring on it uh very it's it's the whole thing the whole thing makes it very interesting frustrating but but very interesting it makes me wonder um and you know i do stupid projects from time to time taking the video from this and putting it where it should be video and uh with editing and using the film sequences which is a fun idea but the point is it will always be SD video from a DVD, you know, so it's always going to look horrible. And the problem is, is I'd like to see it as broadcast, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Um, so you got that restoration feature. As far as um, the cover is concerned, uh, it's an interesting thing because it's a very, it's a very <laughs> vibrant cover for the source material. You know, Day of the Triffids is not a sunny day in, in a pasture. And this is, you know, based on a uh, a photo, uh, a publicity photo for, for the series, which is fine. Uh, but it's it's really, it, it's, it once again, I don't know if this really sells. I mean, this almost sells it better than this. That being said, I actually like the cover for this. But um, what I find interesting is that our two heroes here at the at the cover actually don't doesn't really look like them. And in fact, the woman the way that the way that this is done, the woman looks a bit like Annika Wills to me. I, I just I find it a, a strange cover. What I do like about it, and I don't know if you could tell, I'm trying to get the light to kind of reflect from it here. But it, it, the there's different textures. On, on the o-ring and it makes it you know some some of it's really glossy and some of it's matte I just love when they do that and I think this is a you know that alone makes me love the this cover a little bit more than I probably should um, but speaking of which uh, Clayton Hickman on Twitter this is his favorite one of his favorite uh, series of all time and uh, he made a cover of this um, an alternate cover which is quite beautiful and he he was able to source really nice quality uh, pictures and I, I, I can't imagine who he got those from but uh, he is is a really big fan and when I used to make DVD covers for myself one of the things that I really strived at was however the logo looked in the TV show is uh, how I want it to look on the uh, DVD or the Blu-ray, you know, they shouldn't be different. One of my, one of the greatest horrible examples of this, one of the greatest crimes against this is only when I laugh. Only when I laugh has really distinctive, uh, font for its series. But when network released it, uh, surprisingly, cause they're really good at this, they used a completely different type of font, which I mean that only when I laugh font is so iconic to that series. I just didn't understand why they didn't use it. And they didn't use it for this, even though I don't mind the typesetting for this at all. I think it, I think it actually looks really nice. Uh, Clayton did his own, and I think that that looks really nice too, but I think he's a very talented person, so uh, that's not too terribly surprising. As far as the technical side to this, um, this is a region-free Blu-ray. I was able to play it on my Region A player just fine, so it's region free. It is a uh, obviously 1920 by 1080. It's 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 HD. It has English DTS mono and uh, English subtitles. It's on a uh, Blu-ray 25 disc. You know, there's two types of disc: Blu-ray 25 and uh, Blu-ray disc 50, meaning 25 gigs or 50 gigs. It's how much space that they have available to it. So they put this on a 25 gig disc, okay? So now I want to do a comparison between uh, the uh, between the DVD and the Blu-ray. We're going to take a look at uh, video sequences 
and we're also going to take a look at film sequences uh, and, and just take a look to see what you think because there's no right I, your opinion whether you like it or not there's no right or wrong answers as far as how it should have been presented I think there's only one answer but if if you're liking it then that's okay but here's a comparison Look, you can come in by yourself, or you can clear off. Hold on to that, brother. Sort you bloody lot out. <laughs> In 1961, he turned up at the Office of European Oils. We've had it analyzed, Mr. Palangris. Our experts confirm that it is a vegetable oil. But with extraordinary properties. To be honest, I've never seen anything quite like it. You will be seeing a very great deal of it, Mr. Grant. It will, I think, come on the market in maybe seven or eight years' time. Possibly. So it's kind of like, what do I think about this release? First of all, um, the film sequences look amazing. And judging by the... Uh, restoration feature that the ARC put together, and they're the folks who remastered this, I think they're very proud of what they made. And, and they should be for the film sequences in particular. They're really nice, and some of the areas that really pop for me are the uh, Triffid uh, props, because there are so many variations in the color throughout it, and there's veins and stuff, and it so it, they really come out very nicely. They're very beautiful. You know, I, I've noticed that there's been issues um, in terms in the past with some of these. Like I, I, like I said, I think that the grading for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is cold. It's it's a colder grading, uh, and some get too hot. You know, like the people look like they have suntans. I think this this is the right. Uh, right mix this is the right balance the film eyes video sequences they don't bother me as much as they probably should it shocks me that i'm saying this i wish that they were done properly but overall i enjoy watching this this story to me is engaging enough to watch it um and enjoy it and that's just my thing now as far as like my rating for this this is tough because there are two ways of looking at it. There's two categories. And obviously, if you're a television purist and you want to see the stuff as close to broadcast as possible, the fact that they filmize the video sequence, this, that is a problem. That is unfortunate. And this this is a missed opportunity by the BBC. And there's, there's a bigger missed opportunity, too, is the fact that if you're going to do this, you know, if you why why can't you do it both ways? And and they they gave the explanation if you take it at face value that they felt like they had to filmize it because of dropouts, etc. And I don't really understand how dropouts can be fixed by filmizing, um, but whatever. Uh, but there was an opportunity here that say that you do restore this as as broadcast and you have it on the disc and then you have a creative version like a movie version a cut down version if you want and make all that filmized if you want for people to have as an alternate version but you don't ever want to discard the original look and feel of of something you always want to be able to offer the original you know as long as that's there then that shouldn't be a problem once again the doctor who discs do that star trek the original series did that you know that's stuff that it should be allowed to people because for people like us, that's a real, um, that's a real selling point. And what what makes it worse is um, I've I've been reading people say that if this is how British television gets treated on Blu-ray, the exception, of course, being Doctor Who and the stuff that Network is releasing. This is mainly the BBC that's non-Doctor Who stuff that we're talking about here. I've been reading people say, if this is how the stuff is going to be released, then they're not going to even buy it anymore. At the very least, they're going to wait until they hear reviews about it. And that's a problem because you want to be able to sell this stuff when it comes out. You you know, and and it, it feels like that they're totally um they're they're totally missing what the audience wants on here. And uh I can't imagine these sell huge. 
So if you get a sizable chunk of people not wanting to buy these because it's not accurate, then that's a shame. And it'd be a shame if that happens. And the problem is, it's like, like I said, this was on a Blu-ray 25. If you would have put this on a Blu-ray 50, you could have had a couple different versions on here. It's it's too bad that, uh, that this has happened because I know, I could just tell from the restoration feature it that the, the ARC was really pleased with the work they did. And that will get overlooked by purists because they wanted the stuff to, to be, you know, they just simply wanted video uh, sequences to be intact. Now, the other side of it, of course, there are people who are just happy that a classic like this has gotten any attention at all, that it's not just rotting away in an archive, that the fact that film sequences that do exist, that I didn't even know existed, uh, has been looked at and, and some care has been given to it to release at least the film portions the best possible quality. And it really feels like that... Um, the ARC did take a lot of care into putting this together. It's just that there's parts of it that uh, didn't meet a lot of our expectations. Some of the people who bought this, you know, they could just sit back and enjoy something that's mostly on film and got some restoration. Um, I don't begrudge either side. If you're a purist and you really are angry that this release has missed the mark, or if you're somebody who's just enjoying this because... It's something that uh, they never thought they'd see a Blu-ray release, let alone something that got any kind of restoration to it at all. I don't begrudge either of you. Um, personally speaking, because of this, and I do consider it as a cock-up, but am I going to stop buying these type of releases? No, I'm not. I'm, I, I, I enjoy getting them, and I know that uh, I'm, I'm sure they're going to get it right at some point, but... I, I need to see what these things look like. If they're offering them, I want to see what they look like. Um, I just hope that they've learned from this, or at least listened to some degree with what people are wanting. You know, that there's enough people that emailed in, sure, you're not going to do a replacement disc for this, but think about it for next time. Think about what you're doing next time. You know, and quite frankly, if you need somebody to QA these things, send them to me. I'll QA them. To be honest, there's hundreds of people, hundreds of us who would offer to offer our time up for free to QA these things to make sure that they're the right way and they look the best and, and all that. So whatever. Just real fast, as always, if you are uh, interested in my podcast from the archive, a British television podcast. I've uh, been going for a number of years now, but, uh, you know, we're trying to keep going here, and uh, there's some good content there. Please check it out. Our, check out our RSS feed. We're available on iTunes. Uh, we're making more, so please check it out. Uh, I think I think you'd like it. Uh, as far as uh, being an archivist and you want to look up for research or anything or just like to know what's existing in the archives, uh, check out Kaleidoscope's TV Brain. That's at www.tvbrain.info. Uh, it's a paid subscription. I've been doing it for years now, but it's a wonderful tool for research, and it's very well-researched. So uh, please, definitely check it out. If you like what I'm doing, or if you have constructive feedback, please send me an email, or let me know if there's a title that you want me to have a go at for one of these videos. You could reach me at feedback at fromthearchive.co.uk. Send me a message. Send me, you know, if you if you wanted to talk British television, just send me a note. Love to hear from you. Uh, and my Twitter is at fromthearchive. I post a lot of stuff there all the time, whether it just be covers or Radio Times listings or TV Times listings. Uh, we have a lot of fun, so please check it out. And then, of course, it all started with a blog for me at uh, www.from-the-archive.co.uk. Check it out. I actually wrote an article, actually three articles, um, each one covering two episodes of the DVD for uh, the Day of the Triffids and my thoughts on it. And there's parts of it I got horribly wrong, that I didn't follow the plot for some reason. I got confused. Check it out. Uh, I, I corrected it, and I mentioned where I corrected but... Uh, there's an expert on the Day of the Triffids that I got source material from, and he embarrassingly had to tell me I didn't really know what I was watching. So check it out. It's it's always fun to look back at one's mistakes. Um, what am I doing? To, what am I going to do with this? Well, obviously, I keep it in my collection, but unfortunately, 
it you know as we all know space is at a premium in our lives and we're hoping that if we get something new we can replace something else but because this is close to the original broadcast i have to keep them both and i need to put them on the shelf